Hi, Mom. Chloe, welcome home. So is everything set for Dad's surprise party? Uh, he got called into work. Can I buy you a coffee? I'm waiting for someone. Uh, My dad. Hi, sweetheart. Hey. Welcome aboard PanCon Flight 257 to London. Flight time today will be six hours and 30 minutes. I love you. People from all over this plane have simply vanished. Chris, let me in! Chris! want answers and believe me so do I and I'll do my best to get them I heard some doctors talking it's not just here it's all over the world one of these days the sky's gonna break Chloe are you okay yeah but mom and Raimi they're both gone one of these days the mountains gonna fall into no! Irene knew this was coming the way it happened how could she know that he took them to protect them from the darkest time in the history of this world the god my mother talked about would never do something like this we all have a right to know if we're gonna die we're gonna die No spoilers, no flaps, no elevators, and if I run this thing dry, no reverse thrust. I need some room. I just really need you to know how much I love you, no matter what happens. Dad? Looks like the end of the world. One of these days the sky's gonna break and everything will escape and I'll know Well, I mean, Rayford adores Chloe. I mean, he adores his daughter, and that's very clear, even in the first scene where you, you see them surprising one another at the airport. Um, and even though he is having this other relationship with, with, the, with the flight attendant, he, you still can tell that he is ultimately a good guy because he loves his daughter so much, and that he will make the right choice. But, it's a very terrifying situation to be 3,000 feet up in the sky and so, you know, miles away from home and not know what's going on down there. People are just disappearing left and right. My, my, my son has disappeared, my wife has disappeared, and Chloe's still there. So this relationship takes a whole other dynamic, which uh, they're, the, they're the only ones left from the family. The fact that the rapture takes place for my character on an airplane is what drew me to the material. I, I, I thought it was most unusual. I thought it was, it was so surprising, the concept of people, passengers disappearing while you're flying the plane, that it, it, it awakened some of my worst nightmares. The last thing I want to do is, is the worst thing that I could have happen in my, my nightmare is to have, have be experienced a plane crash. I mean, I feel so terrible for people who go through that and you read about it. And, um, and then to be the pilot of that plane and not know how, to not know how to cope with the fact that these passengers are disappearing and then to realize it's related to the rapture is, is a challenge, not only for the, for the character, but, but for an actor. I mean, this isn't... Uh, this isn't something I've ever done before. I mean, this, to me, I was uncomfortable with it because it was so outside of the box, it was so unlike anything I've done before. And I'm the sort of person that if there's something that challenges me or scares me, I'm gonna, within reason, go towards it. And that's, that's why I did it. If you look at my filmography, I, I've, I've, I have made spiritual movies or spiritually inclined movies. I love City of Angels, I love Knowing. Um, even uh, Ghost Rider and Drive Angry or Season of the Witch, they're movies that deal with a supernatural element. I find that interesting and I always have, I've always gravitated towards it. But what made this extra special for me was the idea of family that, that um, 
for me, what the movie really is about is the importance of family and that families will go see this movie and they will share this experience together and hopefully in some way it'll encourage them to, to, to stay committed to their family. Vic is a is a, a legend. He's a, he's a he's a you know super professional guy. A very nice man. He's he's you know I met him on another movie where we were working together, season of the witch. But on this one, we had a quick little chat in, in in a pub in England somewhere in a hotel and just shared ideas about what what it was about Left Behind that we were both passionate about. And I was very encouraged by that conversation. And then when I, I flew to Baton Rouge to start production, he was showing me his concepts, the, his the visual concepts of how he wanted to cut the movie together and the action sequences and, and, and just how he was really on target with everything. So I felt like I was in very safe hands with, with Vic and that they got the right man for this material because he'll make it, um, he'll make it both, you know, terrifying in terms of the action adventure element but also with a lot of heart because he he has a lot of heart my 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 greatest hope for the movie is that it works as 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 something that people will be entertained by and thrilled by but also that they'll they'll go home and they'll have dinner table conversations with their family and they'll say do you think this could happen or would it happen or it'll inspire discussion and and closeness My brother Mark is a uh, uh, pastor, and he was the one that really wanted me to do this. He kept saying, you know, Nikki, he calls me, I really think you should make these, this movie. It's a great series of books, and, and he's, he was the one that inspired me to look at it. So I would talk with him about it, and clearly he is very immersed in all of this. So that was interesting, and he's excited about it. You know, when I read the script, it was instantly, I was like, oh my gosh, this is such an amazing opportunity to play such a strong female character. And, and I saw obviously that Nick, Nicolas Cage was attached and, and I've always wanted to do a very like action packed movie. And, and that was this, but it also had the story behind it. You know, it wasn't just all this explosions and craziness. So I just, I loved the script when I read it and that's really what drew me to do it. Chloe and I both are very stubborn and bullheaded at times, which any of my friends would tell you. <laughs> but, uh, but identifying with her was fun because she is a lot like me. And uh, that was a freeing in a way because I didn't have to feel so much pressure to create someone so separate from myself. Yeah, the movie is very action-packed and working with director such as Vic Armstrong was incredible in this in this case, and he was the perfect person to experience my first action film with, you know, and, and he would come up to me with, with these outlandish stunt ideas and I'd, I'd always get so excited because I'm game for anything and, and I always felt so safe with him, you know, I, I knew that he wasn't going to put me in a position that he didn't feel comfortable putting me in, so he was really the perfect director to have for this. Well, I mean, as far as, as far as stunts go, I don't. I had to the scene in, in the movie where I'm I'm on a bridge. This was one of the outlandish things. Vic comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, how do you how do you feel about free climbing a, a 400 foot bridge?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> but I did it, and I free climbed a 400 foot bridge, and I was harnessed in at the top of the top of this bridge, and there was a helicopter with a camera in it circling me, and. The wind when you're that high up is ridiculous, especially from a helicopter. It was it was crazy, but that's probably my favorite memory of the whole shoot because I've obviously never done anything like that. I think Chloe and her father are so relatable because they're very they're very human in the way that they're written. Um, Chloe's very conflicted about the way she feels about her father in, in the beginning of this movie. There's there's some deception going on that she can see through, that she, she knows there's more going on than he's leading on. But I mean, at the end of the day, she, he is her father and she loves him unconditionally and 
And I think that is what makes it so relatable, is that everyone has their issues and relationships, and no relationship is perfect. Oh, I grew up knowing what the rapture was and knowing what it entailed, but before, before filming this movie, I never really sat down and thought, you know, well, what would that be like? What, what, would, what would the world be like if, that, if the world ended in that way? Let alone, you know, what would happen to the people who, for, for lack of a better phrase, were left behind. You know, the world would be in ruin, and having gained that perspective while filming was very cool. I was alone for 70% of the filming because it was, you know, the story's happening while my father and, and Buck, Chad Michael Murray, are up in the plane, and I'm on, I'm on Earth dealing with the rapture. So a lot of my scenes were by myself. So 80% of the time I'm, I'm with the crew and, and <laughs> I was just alone for four weeks. But it was crazy because you, you go around in these, these sets that they created and these scenarios that they created were so heartbreaking. There's a scene where I find myself in a hospital and I'm in the nursery section where all the babies are born and kept and you know all the children were taken off this earth and that was just such a surreal feeling. Chloe and her mom obviously disagree on faith and, and God and religion and that's caused a huge issue between she and her mom. She feels like she doesn't know her mom anymore. She feels like every conversation they have is about religion and that Chloe needs to get her act together and, you know, and, and figure out what she believes in and Chloe just has, has no interest in that. And it's really broken their relationship and then, you know, when the rapture hits, obviously Chloe has to rethink a lot of things and discovers a lot of things about her mom that she didn't know before. So it's very, it's very heartbreaking. There are moments where you just you feel for Chloe so, so much. I've been very fortunate in my young career. I've worked with a lot of incredible people and a lot of incredible productions, and this was another one of those. You know, working with Nicolas Cage and Vic Armstrong, these are men that are legends, you know, in my field. And uh, as far as personally as an actress, I had never taken on such a significant role in you know a film of this caliber. So that was really special because I I felt like they gave me a really a really huge opportunity and took a chance on me, and I hope it paid off. The pressure of uh, of playing Cameron in this series is I just want to do him justice for, for, for the following. I mean, Left Behind has such a, a massive following and the books, I heard different figures, but I mean, millions and millions and millions of copies. I, I heard something like 65 million copies. And uh, I'm just hoping and praying that we all do it justice and give the, 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 the fans the, the experience that they want. You know, and we're only doing just a tiny little snippet of the books. It's fascinating. It's uh, and it's you know, it's a very, very interesting story, and I think we can tell endless stories with this scenario. So it should be fun. For myself, I thought that Paul and uh, John did an incredible job with the script. I mean, the Cameron was on the page. So from my preparation, I, I really just had to look into the story that we were telling. You know, uh, I got involved a little bit with the books, and or the first book anyway, and just wanted to find a little bit about who Cameron was and his background and where he's going to go. And, and ultimately, you know, Paul and John just paid tribute to that, and, and all of that is on the page. So a little bit of that, a little bit of uh, Anderson Cooper watch, and... Uh, you know, just, just minor things, you know, little character traits. Uh, I have a piece that I keep on me. I won't even show you guys because it's my own little secret and I do it with every character, but it's a, it's a character piece that in my mind comes from when Cameron saved someone in a tsunami and he kept a, an artifact, a little a trinket, and he keeps it on him at all times for good luck. Um, 
and to just always remember that it's very real. Life is very real, and there's always a story, and there's always something. And so it was interesting just getting into the mindset of uh, what an investigative journalist would, would, how they would live, how they would see things. They're always trying to find the answers. And so it's a very, and that's a different way to approach things than, than say, my, maybe myself or, 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 or someone else would. So um, it was just coming in at it at a different approach and finding the humanity in everyone, especially Cameron. You know, this is my first time working with Nick, uh, Nicholas Cage. He is, uh, he's incredible, man. He's a great guy. I, uh, you know, I grew up watching his work and, and, and seeing the career that he was building. And, and I think the most fascinating thing is you step on set the first day and you see his preparation and you see his work and you see him getting in, into character and in the zone and you just assume or you, you, you immediately realize yeah, there are no accidents. He didn't get to where he is on accident. He, he does the work and, uh, you know, I think that that's what all actors should aspire to do is to, to do the work and, and to believe in it. And he's great, man. He's professional, top of the line, and we've, uh, we really hit it off. It's been a, a serious blessing and, uh, you know, the whole experience has just humbled me and I just, you know, I pray that the fans enjoy the experience that we're trying to create for them. Initially, the first problems we see her having is uh, obviously the rapture occurs when they're in the plane and uh, half of the you know, people on the plane disappear. And that sort of puts her into a bit of a spin and uh, her best friend, another flight attendant, disappears as well. So she initially sort of is dealing with that loss and as well as the passengers, as well as trying to keep the plane contained. You can imagine it's such a strange thing to happen, especially if you're not aware of the story. So she goes into shock and panic mode um, and is trying to keep everyone controlled. And then she finds out that uh, the captain, who she's pretty much been having an affair with, well, she doesn't know it's an affair, she's thinking that everything's been great, has a wife and a daughter at home and uh, it breaks her. And I think... Um, you know, she really pulls through in the end. That's what I loved about this character in the first place was through all the trauma and heartbreak. And it's funny, you know, at those final hours when you think maybe your life is over, you want to run to someone you really love and care about. And in this case, it's Ray. And uh, she finds out that he's married. And uh, I think for any woman in general, <laughs> that's gut-wrenching. And that's a, uh, it's not a nice place to be in. I love big movies where the world's ending. Um, they give me extreme anxiety. <laughs> you thought it was a deep impact and Armageddon and all those sorts of things. Um, but this was, you know, this is based on a series of books and uh, it's quite, there's a quite strong belief behind it. My mum uh, was really familiar with the books and the story. Um, I was and I hadn't heard about it. So I actually watched the original movie that they shot of this and I loved it. I loved the characters. Yeah. 10 or 15 years old now. I hadn't read the books, so becoming aware of this story was fascinating. And um, it's really, there's so many different sort of layers to it, you know. The selected people leave the earth and it's creepy and it's scary. And it isn't really the world ending in a way because a lot of people are still left on earth. And what happens to them from there on in is really interesting. And uh, again, I think the world will be divided with who's left on earth and who is going to go with good and who's going to go with bad again. So it's like this, you know, game of cutting people down. It's pretty hardcore. It's a little bit more in depth and it's not just boom, the world's ending like these other movies. There's sort of quite a story behind it. So I was fascinated in it and um, it's got a really strong following. So for me, it's important to deliver Hattie to the fans that have been a part of this series and these books for so long. So I want to make sure <laughs> I'm giving them what they need. <laughs> it's too easy just to come in and play this nasty girl that's having an affair with the captain. She doesn't know that he's married. She's this young, happy woman that gets on the plane and, you know, doing her job. She's really excited about spending time with Ray in London when they land. She's, you know, a little bit caught up in her world um, and you can see that she's got that inner but when she finds out otherwise, you de she gets really angry and you do see that this isn't part of what this woman would do if she knew she wouldn't have gone there. So I think that's where she can redeem herself and then you see her kind of looking after everybody and making a really distinct change throughout the movie where she's going to help save 
everyone in their lives and she really puts her priorities right. I think growing up all the way down in Australia <laughs> and watching movies your whole life and watching Nicolas Cage and then cut to you're on a set one-on-one -on -one with him you know working it's quite surreal it's really a wonderful feeling huge fan of all his movies he's um he's a really really good guy and he's funny and he's quirky and he's very professional and when you get to work with people like that it only lifts your performance I love Vic Armstrong. This was such a treat for me. Um, I honestly feel like his family, uh, half my family English, Vic's from England. Um, I honestly felt like him and his wife and his daughter, instant connection with all of them, good people. And uh, I would bug him every time we were off set, listening to his fascinating stories, you know. Um, I'm obsessed with so many movies that he's been the stunt coordinator for and stunt doubled for certain people. and. Um, there's a movie he did with uh, Tom Cruise called Legend. I just hound him the whole time for stories. He's caring, he's focused, and for such an action-packed movie, Vic kept us really calm and really cool, and it's hard to capture. Um, you know, we're sitting on a plane most of the movie, and uh, to capture all this craziness and action, but he gives us so much freedom in our work and what we wanted to do, and he's so open to everything, and just he kept a really nice tone and calm vibe on set. I think he's been on more sets than anyone, <laughs> so I love him. I think when people come and see the movie, um, they'll be fascinated at this particular story, I think, um, about the world ending, this particular way the world could end. And I think it, uh, I hope it brings a, the bit of the light into, um, you know, the good people, so to speak, that believe, get taken um, first, you know, and there might be something to that. I think everyone's going to have a different response to it. I think the people that have followed the storyline along will be really, um, sort of really strong and really know what's going on. They'll probably know more than we do. But um, for sort of the outsiders that aren't aware of the story, I think they're really going to enjoy sort of this new, new way of the world possibly ending. And, yeah, I hope they enjoy it. I read the teenage version of the books when I was younger. So I read all the books. My mom, she listened to um, the audio book and I was in the car with her. So I know all about the story and I was just so excited to even have the opportunity to audition. Preparing for Shasta has definitely been a challenge for me. Um, some of the roles that I've had before are pretty close to my age, you know, happy, like sparkle. I was singing, so I was, I was in my comfort zone there. But it's challenging me because I have to reach. I'm not a mother yet. I will be one day, but I'm not a mother yet. Um, so I, to feel the pain and emotion of losing your child has been really challenging for me. I know what it's like to lose a relative. Like I know that feeling, so I've been trying to pull from that, but at the same time, I know that a mother's love is something completely different. So I'm trying to like imagine what it would be like to be a mom and for my kid to just be gone. Like there's no rhyme or reason. I have no idea what happened and I'm trying to figure it all out and she's just missing and her clothes are there. What is the first thing that you would think? Like, I don't even know. So for me, it's been very challenging, but it's been a lot of fun because it's been able, I've been able to push myself and mentally like trying to fill the like emotional capacity like it's just been it's been absolutely insane but I hope that I can do it I think it's going to be one of those movies that whether you've read the bible whether you believe in the rapture whether you believe in that it's going to be thought provoking and it's going to make somebody sit and go whoa like what if what if that did happen it's not um the whole story yet. We are only on the plane and it's just beginning. So I think I want it to leave people wanting more and wanting to see more of the story as well. Um, so I'm just excited to be a part of it. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see it already.